One person who knows only too well what a devastating impact bullying can have is Made in Chelsea's Ollie Locke. He joins us now alongside bullying victim turned bully, Denny Lees, and anti-bullying campaigner, Sue Jones. And welcome all of you. Thank okay. you for coming. Yeah. Sue, it was um, your charity that published these findings. What were they? Well, we started to look at it from last year. We started to look at why are people actually bullying and looking at the root causes of that behaviour. And that was the main focus behind it. We repeat at least half of the findings every year, but we started to look at what's going on for young people that are bullying. And um, something sorry. we found was that it starts at home an awful lot. In a it. lot of cases, there's bullying at home or arguments at home and dynamics, stresses and traumas, family breakups. Um, you know, death of relatives, and, and you know, these are real clear triggers. We'd heard this anecdotally before, but this is the first time we had hard facts and data to you know what's going on for young 50 people. 50% of young people questioned said they'd been bullied at some point. The yeah. tricky thing with bullying is that bullying for one person yeah. is banter for somebody yeah. else. It's very subjective, I completely agree. Um, but we have very clear data that says for the 44% that end up feeling depressed, um, the 31% that will actually consider suicide or they yeah. might go on to yeah. self-harm. These are really clear um, data and that needs to be taken very seriously. And uh, bullying takes many forms. And for you, Ollie, you're, uh, you originally, when you first started bullying, bullied, you were seven years old at primary school. Mm. Not from another child, from the teacher. It was the teacher. And, and when you're that age or any age, you treat, you, you trust the teacher as much as you can. Mm. And, uh, and this was a really awful situation. I was sick every morning on the way to school and mum nor teachers could could work out what was wrong with me. Never told anyone. And it was this, I never told anyone. And that's, I think that's the main thing that I'm, I'm here for, is to make sure that people go and tell people. Mm. Because 40% yeah. of people don't. And that is, it's so bad, and I lived a, a horrendous life. But you, you don't tell... Through, you had it so. through, your, um, through your primary school days, but then also at 19 and 20, you had it at uni. And you would think that university, you know, we are accepting, we are, we're, 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 we're bright, young minds yeah. that they wouldn't be judgmental in any way yeah it went completely the opposite way I, I trained to be an actor and then um <laughs> moved off to go and do property in an agricultural university and uh and they didn't like me very much a lot of them didn't like me some of them didn't didn't take good good to me and then decided to um do awful things throw pints on my head over, over nightclub doors and stuff and um we on my car mm. um yeah throw bottles at me pints over my head all what effect did it have on you it was that awful feeling of just not being... You think you're an adult, and, and you think that's finally you're in this kind of grand scheme, world, big world world, and, and you're not. You're, you're actually just a child again. And you don't want to tell people because it's awful, but it's happening all around. I was speaking to someone yesterday that was saying in their 60s they were being bullied, and this is happening everywhere. And it's my chance now to try and tell people to go and talk to people, mm -hmm. because they just don't. Well, Denny, your life started out where you were at primary school and you yourself were being bullied. Yeah. From a young age. And so what sort of things were happening to you then? I've always suffered with my weight, so I've always been big. Um, it started really, I probably was about five or six, mm -hmm. and I remember the first thing happened when there was two boys and a girl got me on the playground, started whacking bags around my face, went home with a black eye. And this is primary school? Yeah. So you were incredibly young here, and the tables turned dramatically when you got to 13 and you yeah. fought back <clears throat> yeah one of the bullies um, from my primary school when she comes to secondary school she was a year above me and she followed me home from school and attacked me so I fought back and I ended up getting the better of her then and, and she, you were 13 at the time and yeah. you got a caution uh, uh, yeah well I got um, got GBH on my criminal record now right Wow, we'll come to that in a moment because yeah, that, and, and I think a lot of people who might be, you know, forced to either retaliate or yeah. be the bully, it's incredible the impact that mm. can have on your future life. Um, the power went to your head. Yeah, because then it got, got to the fact that like, everyone I kind of knew that I used to get bullied, and then when I fought back then and got the better of her, then it was like, oh my god, do you know what I mean? So then Don't mess with her. Yeah. yeah, and then I was like, and then I, I did enjoy it, then I'm not, you know. I probably shouldn't have, but I did because it did go in more. Well, then others then. looked to you for protection yeah. and support. I used to get a lot of the people that was getting bullied come to my house in the morning and ask to walk to school with me. If I was getting bullied by people, they'd say, "Can you go and have a word?" So I'm, mm. I'm not. Um, I don't get bullied by them. And who did you bully? It's not that I'd. I wouldn't like go out of my way to bully people in a sense, but I'd just try and you know have a laugh. And uh, to me, I'd think it was funny, but. Obviously, now I know it wasn't. And even though you knew the impact of what it was like mm -hmm. as a seven-year-old, having it reversed onto you, 
you still did it yourself. Yeah. But this is, goes back to your original point, which is there is a lot of similarities yep. between the bully and the bullied. Absolutely. And in fact here, yeah. same person. Yeah. Well, um, people are twice as likely to bully others if they've experienced bullying themselves. They're kind of coping strategies. Mm -hmm. And there are huge similarities between, even in terms of physical health. So young people who have been bullied are around 29% to say they constantly suffer from ill health. 27% of those who are doing the bullying will also say the same thing. So there's massive similarities between the two. Yes. And mm. for you, Ollie, the point that you made is that if it's happening, then talk to somebody. Mm. I think it's the most important thing. It's what people don't do is they don't talk about it. And I think they're, they're nervous, they're shy, they don't want to seem this whole sissy word, all that kind of mm. stuff. It's, it's rubbish. And they, people need to talk about it to get this all sorted out because it's, it's become so ridiculous and it's affected everyone and it much easier now to bully someone because you've got access to them via their phones and their tablets that was something that i also got involved in because of seeing people on made in chelsea get bullied by social media and by people sitting behind their screens and the girls get an awful time mm. a lot of the time mm. well thank okay. you all thank very you much indeed. very much thanks. coming Thanks. see you